A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this, the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet had risen in our midst, and God has visited his people. This report about them spread through the whole of Judea in all of the surrounding region. One time, God and an atheist scientist were having an argument. The scientist said, in a few years, science can advance to the point that we can create life ourselves from very simple elements, and we won't need you anymore. Fine, said God. When you can do that, then we will talk. A few decades later, the scientist came back and said, we are able to make a living being from dirt now. Really, said God. I want to see you do just that. So the scientist grabbed dirt from the ground, about to perform his grand experiment, to which God said, wait, 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 wait. You get your own dirt. Very often, we address God as the author of life. The whole essence of God is life, it's existence. When Moses asked God what his name was, God told in reply from the burning bush that his name was I Am, or the Existing One. God is life. God is someone who makes dead things alive, who makes non-existent things or persons be. God loves life and opposes death because He knows how great and beautiful life really is, especially life with Him. And this goes to the core of our religion, to the core of Christianity. This eternal God wanted to share His existence, something that belongs only to Him. He wanted to share life with someone. So he created us to share his existence with us. And this thing that we call death is a result of our rebellion against him. A rebellion which he conquered through his son's death on a cross. In the gospel we just read, we hear about a very rare miracle that Jesus performed, raising someone from the dead. Now, Jesus performed countless miracles, healing the sick, uh, he, uh, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and making a lame walk. Now, we have three miracles recorded in the Gospel in which Jesus resurrected someone. Those are Nain, widow's son, Jairus' young daughter, and Lazarus. Ultimately, what Jesus did for that widow from the gospel is an act of great mercy for the woman, not for the man. Seems being old with no one to take care of you in the old age was a great hardship in that time. However, it also reaffirms God's desire and ability to foster life, to make dead things alive again. That's what God wants and is able to do. Now, we live in a culture of death, 
in which mothers kill their children, and very often children kill their mothers and fathers in their old age. Around the world, there is so much violence and so much murder, and that's only bodily death. What about spiritual death? There are many people in the world who may be physically alive, walking, talking, eating, drinking, sleeping, while being dead on the inside because of selfishness and pride, and ultimately because of rejection of God in their life. Who is the source of all life? When we have no God in us, we are dead. We are dead inside. Spiritual death is the worst thing that can ever happen to a person. A life devoid of anything divine is a pitiful life. And there are too many people in the world who live such a life. There is a great lack of meaning in people's lives today. That is why so many are on depression and anxiety medication. That is why the suicide rate is so high in this most prosperous country. My question for you and me is this. What does God need to make a life in your life? It may be your faith or your prayer life. It may be your family life, which is falling apart. As a priest, I do everything and anything possible to make my parish family alive. I'm not just talking about people coming to church or getting involved in our numerous parish events and fundraisers. If you are involved in all of these and attend all of them, but our faith is dead, all of this is pointless. I am asking God every Sunday, every day, to make us spiritually alive, to create this connection between us and our Creator, between us and those sitting next to us in a pew. If our faith is dead, we are no more than a social club. There is this story in which uh, a new priest came to such a parish, a parish in which people didn't go to confession, a parish that fought with each other all the time, just a parish in which there was no spiritual life, no spiritual connection whatsoever. After a couple of months of no progress, the priest decided to do something drastic and have a funeral for his spiritually dead parish. He put an ad in the paper, an announcement in a bulletin, and announced at all the services in the church the time of the funeral. He got a coffin and put it in the church and held a funeral liturgy. During the funeral, all the parishioners were very curious who was in that coffin. They all lined up to look inside. When they did, each was shocked to see a mirror in that coffin and each of their faces looking back at them. Our Lord wants to renew us and revive our faith, which was obliterated by our selfishness, our desires, and our pride. The thing is that God is the sole author of life. And only He can make things that are dead come back to life. No matter how long, no matter how hard things are dead, there is no limit to what God can do to restore life to anything that has been dead, be it our faith or our relationships, be it our nation. God sent His Son to bring back that which was lost to reanimate that which was dead. Only God can make us truly alive, because that is who He is all about. 
In closing, uh, I want to stress that we really want to feel alive, to truly, really be alive. What, and what we generally say, we want to make our life meaningful. We ought to live our life the God's way. What does that mean? Do what God does. What does God do? God shares His existence, His life with us. That's why He created us. So in order to make our life mean something, we should share our life with others, spend our life on others, and not just ourselves. And that's in fact what hell is all about. Being stuck with just yourself for all eternity. A total isolation with just you. It's really clever and awesome how God ordered this life. If we live life just for ourselves, just seeing our own needs and our own wants, then we are wasting our life and experience only misery. But if we live for others, if we share our life with those around, then we are truly alive. Then we make our life meaningful. Amen.